Imagine a ladder. Each step takes you higher. Now, imagine that ladder represents how we learn. That's what Bloom's Taxonomy Revised is all about. It's a framework that helps teachers understand the different levels of thinking involved in learning. Just like climbing a ladder, we build upon each level to reach higher levels of understanding. Why is this important for teachers? Because it helps them design lessons that challenge students to think critically and creatively. Instead of just memorizing facts, students learn to apply their knowledge, analyze information, and even create something new. Bloom's Taxonomy Revised is like a teacher's toolbox. It provides a common language for educators to discuss learning goals and create engaging lessons. By understanding the different levels of thinking, teachers can guide students towards becoming active and engaged learners. This framework ensures that students are not just passive recipients of information. Instead, they become active participants in their own learning journey. With Bloom's Taxonomy Revised, teachers can create a dynamic and stimulating learning environment where students are challenged to reach their full potential. The story of Bloom's Taxonomy begins back in 1956 with an educational psychologist named Benjamin Bloom. He and his colleagues wanted to create a way to classify different levels of thinking in education. Their work led to the creation of the original Bloom's Taxonomy. This original framework was widely adopted by educators and had a significant impact on education. However, as time passed, educators realized that the field of education was evolving. They felt the need to update the taxonomy to reflect these changes. In 2001, a group of researchers led by Lauren Anderson and David Krathwold revised the original Bloom's Taxonomy. This revised version, known as Bloom's Taxonomy Revised, shifted the focus from nouns to verbs. This change emphasized the active nature of learning. Moreover, the revised taxonomy made a significant change by placing creating at the top of the hierarchy, highlighting the importance of creativity in the learning process. This revision ensured that Bloom's taxonomy remained relevant and continued to serve as a valuable tool for educators in the 21st century. Bloom's Taxonomy Revised presents six levels of cognitive learning, each building upon the one before it. Let's explore these levels. 1. Remembering. This is the foundation. It involves recalling facts and basic concepts. For example, remembering the multiplication table or the dates of historical events. 2. Understanding. This goes beyond recall. It's about understanding the meaning of information, explaining it in your own words, or summarizing a concept, like explaining the causes of World War II or summarizing the plot of a novel. 3. Applying. Here, you learn to use knowledge in a different context. This could be solving math problems using a formula or using grammar rules to write a sentence. 4. Analyzing. At this level, you break down information into smaller parts to understand the relationships between them. For example, comparing and contrasting different political systems or identifying the main arguments in the debate. 5. Evaluating. This involves making judgments about the value of information or ideas. This could be critiquing a scientific study, justifying a decision, or assessing the credibility of a source. 6. Creating. This is the highest level where you generate new ideas, products, or solutions. This could involve designing an experiment, writing a short story, or composing a piece of music. Bloom's Taxonomy Revised is not just a theoretical framework, it has practical implications for educators. Let's explore how it can be applied in lesson planning and assessment. 1. Lesson Planning Teachers can use the taxonomy to create learning objectives that target different cognitive levels. For example, instead of just asking students to list the planets in the solar system, remembering, a teacher might ask them to design a travel brochure for a chosen planet, highlighting its unique features, creating. 2. Assessment Design Bloom's taxonomy can guide the development of assessments that measure different levels of understanding. Instead of relying solely on multiple-choice questions that test recall, remembering, 
Teachers can include essay questions that require students to analyze, evaluate, or create higher-level thinking skills. By aligning learning objectives and assessments with Bloom's taxonomy, educators can ensure that students are challenged to think critically and creatively. This framework encourages a deeper understanding of concepts and promotes the development of higher-order thinking skills. Therefore, Bloom's Taxonomy Revised serves as a valuable tool for educators who strive to create engaging and effective learning experiences for their students.